Goodnight, guys. Well, it is going on midnight on this hot, sticky summer night here uh, in, in the lockdown here in Garfield, Texas here. We have made it to June 1st, 2020, and uh, if you have forgotten who I am already, I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, <laughs> and we are back already on Collapse Chronicles. So, uh, and I just did a short video on uh, welcoming myself back to Collapse Chronicles, and you can go listen to that if you want to find out why I am back. But it is so good to be back after my short, what was it, two-week vacation. So uh, anyway, as I just reported in, in, that, in this video I just did, that, that what I did is I just went through every single story on Yahoo News. 290 stories. 290 stories on the June 1st, 2020 edition of, the, of Yahoo News. We had 155 stories about the newest, biggest distraction on the planet. We had 60 stories about yesterday's biggest distraction on the planet, which got me to take a vacation. We have 75 other stories out of 290, and we have a grand total of one story about anything to do with our fellow earthlings. One story out of 290 mentioning, uh, mentioning anything to do with our fellow earthlings and the collapse of a planet. And if you think it's a climate change story, I uh, got some bad news. You will not find the words climate change, global warming, uh, Arctic heat wave, uh, whatever. Uh, but we do have CBS News coming in with this story. Uh, unbelievably, Yahoo News picking this up. I find we have a total of 14 comments on a planet of 8 billion people. 14 people bothering to comment on this story, which is the biggest comment of all. Take it away. I'm just going to sit here and read this. Uh, and, and you guys, uh, I, I'm going to put the link on here. I suggest you read it yourself, but I'm just going to sit here and read it uh, before I go to bed tonight, and I'll post this on Tuesday, June 2nd. Anyway, take it away, CBS News, and the one story not about the, the, the distractions. Extinctions raise risk of biological annihilation, study warns. <clears throat> In recent months, the global pandemic, the corona panic, has illuminated how mismanagement of wild animals and natural ecosystems can threaten human health and even the stability of society, can you say Mad Max? Now, a new study from Stanford University issues a dire warning, concluding the extinction rate, the extinction rate of our fellow earthlings is likely much greater than previously thought. Hmm. The extinction rate is likely much greater than previously thought, and that if we don't reverse course, the consequences for mankind, not to mention the all of our fellow worldlings going extinct, could be, quote, unimaginable. The new study titled Vertebrates on the Brink as Indicators of Biological Annihilation and the Sixth Mass Extinction was published Monday, June 1st, in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. 
it highlights how human pressures such as population growth, the number one human pressure, I do not believe it, population growth, habitat destruction, the wildlife trade, pollution, and climate change, all of which are direct results of human population growth, have combined to wipe out hundreds of species and are critically threatening thousands more around the world at an unprecedented rate. This, the authors say, is eroding nature's ability to provide vital sustenance, such as this margarita, to people. Hmm. This research is an up if you if you vaguely recognize this, this research is an update of a 2015 paper from the same lead authors, which famously declared we have now entered the era of Earth six mass extinction. That study concluded, you know, five years ago, concluded uh, that the, the current extinction rate is more than 100 times normal, meaning that the world is now losing the same number of species in one year that we used to lose in 100 years. And while past mass extinctions were caused by natural events, like the impact of massive asteroid that may have doomed the dinosaurs, the current one is exclusively caused by human activity, namely breeding being the number one human activity. <clears throat> This study backs up the findings of an alarming United Nations report on species extinction release last year. That report, assembled by 400 experts from 50 nations, put the world on notice that one in every four species on Earth, one million in total, could be at risk of extinction, many within decades. For this new study, the authors examined thousands of species of our fellow earthlings and found that 515 species of terrestrial vertebrates, meaning land-dwelling uh, animals, are on the brink of extinction, each with fewer than 1,000 individuals remaining about half of those had fewer than 250 individuals left. And of course, this is only looking at vertebrates, you know, animals with backbones. They're not even talking about. Uh, they're, they're not, this is land, this is not even looking at fish with backbones or insects or uh, all, all the rest of them. Uh, okay, so, for instance, we have the Sumatran rhino with a maximum of 80 remaining. We have 200 Espanolan giant tortoises remaining. And we could go on from there. Uh, the authors estimate that nearly the same number of species are likely to go extinct in just the next 20 years. So when it says the same number, I'm already, uh, are they talking about 515? It's, uh, it's unclear what the same number is at this point. Are they talking 515 or are they talking a million? Uh, anyway, in addition, they found that more than 237,000 distinct populations of those 515 species have already been extinguished, meaning obliterated off of the planet since 1900. And most of these highly endangered species are concentrated 
in tropical and subtropical regions that are affected by human encroachment. Yes. Extinction rates are rising so fast that author Geraldo Sabayo, come on computer, extinction rates are rising so fast that uh, co-author Her Gerardo Ceballos, a senior researcher at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, warned that without expansion of conservation efforts, and of course uh, conservation efforts have been completely obliterated uh, by the economic lockdowns of the corona panic, uh, without expansion of conservation efforts, quote, most likely they will become extinct. I'm assuming he's talking about these 515 species. Most likely they will become extinct in the next decade. So uh, by 2030, you can kiss goodbye these 500 uh, species. Sabaya stresses that extinction is truly irreversible since once a species is gone, there is no way to bring it back. He put it bluntly, quote, This is our final opportunity. We are running out of time. What we do in the next 10 to 15 years will define the future of biodiversity and the future of our species, close quote. The authors remind us that while these exotic species can seem distinct and unrelated to our everyday lives, humans everywhere depend on the health of the natural world Quote, our results show that the extinction crisis is even worse than previously assessed and that the consequences for biological diversity and mankind are unimaginable. Well, I can imagine them. Uh, and, and you imagine... You, you, you know, uh, when something like the corona panic comes along or some racist honky cop acts like a racist honky cop, uh, what that is setting off, wait till, uh, you know, till one of these come, when people start figuring out that uh, the unimaginable consequences of what humans have done to our fellow earthlings and you're going to see what a bad hair day looks like. The key takeaway is that uh, this is Jane Goodall uh, called the key takeaway is that quote we cannot separate ourselves from the natural world we are part of it and depend on it for food, water, and so on. We continue to destroy it at our peril. We are treating the natural resources of the planet as though they were infinite and in putting economic development before the protection of the environment for future generations. And as increasing numbers of plant and animal species become extinct, the health of ecosystems are compromised since all species have a role to play in the complex tapestry of life. Yes, thank you, Jane. Uh, Rebecca Shaw, chief scientist at World Wildlife Fund, who was not involved in the research, says the paper delivers a credible and vital message for humanity. Yes, quote, telling us with scientific certainty that the survival of these species is linked to our own survival. 
Alright, we have Dr. Paul Ehrlich uh, weighing in. What does, what does Paul have to say about this new study? When humanity exterminates populations and species of other creatures, it is sawing off the limb on which it is sitting, destroying working parts of our own life support system. Thank you, Paul. One vivid example of how sensitive ecosystems are to change is illustrated by the decimation of kelp forest in the northern Pacific, uh, which I have actually detailed and chronicled myself. Because of overfishing, killer whales began attacking sea otters, or at least the sea otters that hadn't already been killed by humans. A natural predator of the sea urchin, as a result of the decline in sea, or sea otters, populations of sea urchins exploded. This overwhelmed kelp forest, upsetting the natural balance, wiping out these thriving underwater kelp cities and the species which inhabited them. Yep. Ecosystems ranging from kelp forest to coral reefs to mangrove forest to rainforest and deserts depend on long evolved relationships between species to maintain their functions, S said Ceballos, quote, every time we lose a species, we erode the capability of Earth to maintain life in general and human life in particular, close quote. That's because with thinner populations, species are unable to serve their function in an ecosystem. The, ramific the ramifications cascade through the environment, not only weakening the biosphere itself, but also the vital service they provide to humans, like maintaining our water quality, pollination of crops, and protection against diseases. The authors say this trend is leading to an intensification of health threats to humans, with the corona panic being just one timely example of the interplay between wild species, changing ecosystems, and human health. Back to Dr. Ceballos, we have destroyed, we humans have destroyed more than 50% of all natural ecosystems and we trade millions of wild species every year. <clears throat> we have broken the barriers that biodiversity and ecosystems provide us against natural diseases. Close quote. Uh, <clears throat> Sabayo said the current corona panic and more than 30 to 50 other outbreaks of diseases affecting humans in the last decade, including SARS, MERS, and Ebola, have arisen from the same issues, habitat destruction and illegal trade. Quote, we have the vaccine against all these emerging diseases maintaining the natural ecosystems, stopping the illegal wildlife trade, and rethinking the legal wildlife trade." Close quote. While there are many factors which contribute to the extinction of species, including habitat destruction, hunting wild animals for food, traditional medicine and pets, the illegal wildlife trade, and climate change, some factors are easier to deal with than others. Uh, 
you know, like stopping the illegal trade of wildlife uh, should be a good place to start. Climate change, on the other hand, is a much tougher and longer term challenge. Uh, Ehrlich says climate disruption is already a factor in species extinction and, quote, will become a gigantic factor. If you garden or raise, this is Paul, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was Paul, back to, uh, no, this is, I hate, okay, CBS News knows damn well they need to make separate paragraphs for different speakers. Uh, staying with Paul Ehrlich, if you garden or raise tropical fish, you know that every species is evolved into and adapted to a very ideal climate. They are extremely sensitive to changes in their environments, especially temperatures and humidity, explains Ehrlich. And then uh, back to Ceballos. Ceballos warns that if we continue to lose biodiversity at this scale, little else will matter. Quote, when you change the climate, you are automatically wiping stuff out because they cannot adapt or move to a different climate. This is not an option. This is the struggle for the survival of all living things and humanity. Close quote. While the consequences of inaction are seemingly dystopian, Rebecca Shaw of the hopium-soaked World Wildlife Fund underscores that transformation is possible through creativity and cooperation. Yes, uh, but we are not and they, so after all of that, what they try to do in the last uh, in, in the last paragraph is make a margarita, uh, make a, they, they try to make a margarita, an end times uh, margarita out of the limes of everything they said. Okay, so uh, then we have fourteen reactions. And then, uh, okay, and now that you finish reading about biological annihilation, uh, CBS News wants you to read their next three stories. Semi-truck appears to drive through protesters on Minneapolis interstate. Quote, authorities suspect white supremacist and far-left extremists are behind the violence at protest and do not forget SpaceX. SpaceX makes history with successful rocket launch. And there you have it. I have just read you the entire every single bit of environmental news on the planet according to Yahoo News. Out of 290 stories, one story about the collapse of a planet and the extinction of the human race. And so now, guys, I, I simply have to decide whether to use this convenient technicality of the distraction of, from the distraction of uh, what's going on on this planet as license to come back on to Collapse Chronicles without just falling into the same trap I just fell into. Uh, but we do have some lessons about Mad Max to gather, uh, 
while we all sit around and wait for the planet to burn. But it is about midnight, and uh, I need to go listen to the crickets and the frogs calm my brain down and uh, decide what to do with Collapse Chronicles now that the corona panic seems to have blown over. Imagine that. Bye, guys.